Trojan fans, welcome to a very special edition of the Peristyle Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Abraham, joined alongside Mr. Connor Morissette, a.k.a. Triple Double. And uh, for the second week in a row, we have a very special guest. Uh, he just was a running back for the last four years at Mississippi State, transferred into USC, uh, Jaquavius Woody Marks. Uh, Woody, thanks for coming on the show, man. Hey, no problem. Thank you, guys. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good to see you. Uh, it was fun. We got to interview you. Was it this week or was it? I don't know. what. Last was. week. Last week. We got to talk to uh, uh, Woody Marks. You kind of ex explained why you got the Woody name, the Woody nickname from uh, Toy Story, which was kind of funny. But it was, it was cool to get to talk to you. I think all the fans really liked uh, your interview and stuff. So we wanted to, you know, get you on here. And we worked with House of Victory and set this one up. So, again, thanks for uh, coming on. Yeah, no problem. Woody, on the... Nickname. I read a story today. So growing up, you had the Woody nickname, <clears throat> excuse me. And then I believe you were playing an away game in high school and someone mispronounced your name either on the PA or the broadcast. And didn't your mom say, just call him Woody? And, and, and it's kind of <laughs> stuck like that. Maybe it was going away a little bit. And then is that how it kind of stuck after uh, you got a little older? Uh, yeah. Um, a lot of people couldn't pronounce my name right. So, um, it was just like, just call me Woody, just call me Woody. So it'd be better for people just to call me Woody. Um, everybody from like my hometown knew me as Woody, though. How do you say your first name, just so USC fans know? It's Joe Quavius. Joe Quavius, okay. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure when I said it the first So I was close. I was close. To <laughs> I didn't quite get there. Um, I mentioned House of Victory already. I did, did want to thank every thank House of Victory for setting this one up. Uh, obviously, USC's uh, collective there. If you want to donate, I'm going to put the QR code up on the screen. Um, we are live on our YouTube channel, but it's also a podcast. So you can go to houseofvictory.com if you're listening on the podcast, if you want to get more information about um, what you can do for uh, the House of Victory and helping USC athletics, all that. And I wanted to let everyone know uh, the Legends of Troy will be going on Monday, April 29th. You can go to houseofvictory.com slash legends. So right now, Matt Barkley, Mark Sanchez, Rodney Pete, April Ross, the volleyball star, uh, Mark McGuire, home run king guy. All those guys are confirmed. There's more uh, legends at that event. So if you want to go check it out, you can go to houseofvictory.com slash uh, legends and check it out. I, I wanted to talk to you, uh, Woody, about your kind of work coming in. I know you've signed a contract with House of Victory. Have you been doing some charity work there? Like what 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 have you kind of, kind of been doing with House of Victory? Um yeah, everything is everything's been uh we did charity work. Um uh, it was great. Um just giving back to the people in the community. Um I like that. I like the, that they do this as a school, um, just to give back to the community, doing a lot of things. Um we do a lot of stuff. Um we went to the boys and girls club. That was good, having having fun with the kids, teaching them stuff that we know about the game of football and teaching them stuff in life. Um that's a big plus to me coming to USC. Is that um, just how they give back to the community? That's really great to hear, Woody. I've been to a couple of those Boys and Girls Club events. Those are awesome. Taking it to your recruitment coming to USC, I'm sure you're familiar with Marshawn Lloyd last year. He was a guy similar to you, came from the SEC to USC, will be a one and done guy going into the NFL draft. Did the coaching staff pitch you on Marshawn Lloyd's ear last year? And was that intriguing to you have you talked to marshawn lloyd at all because you guys are going to have a similar experience just take me through your recruitment and the impact marshawn lloyd either had you just watching him or maybe you've spoken to him too um yeah we talked um right before i committed um we talked and um it was just just asking like how was it how was it like just being in the offense i've been in like the the tree of the offense with coach leach and he just gave me the ins and outs he was like great team um everybody's there who just going to help you and on the academic part is the top school. So who wouldn't want to come to USC in the background of running backs? Like that's really big to come here and play football and play running back at that position. You mentioned uh, Mike Leach. I'm going to put up, here's his book, uh, Swing Your Sword by Mike Leach. I don't know if you got to check that one out yet, but mm -hmm. what, we had a lot of people on the Peristyle wanted to know any good stories about uh, Mike Leach. Um, he was obviously one of the, you know, he, at Washington State, we got to cover him for a while out here on the West Coast, but uh, just one of the biggest characters in college football. 
Uh, one story, one story that's always gonna stick with me. Um, I think I'm, I'm, I do it every time I go to the movies. So we used to go to the movies Fridays and um at nighttime after like meetings and stuff. And um, he told me I had got a hot dog, and I was looking for ketchup. It wasn't no ketchup. He told me to do um nacho cheese on the hot dog. He was like, "You missing out." And then he told me a trick. He said he did a magic trick one time. And I'm, I was looking at him like, a magic trick? Come on, Coach Leach. You did a magic <laughs> trick with a hot dog. And he was like, he was like, yeah, I did a magic trick. And poof, it was gone. I'm like, <laughs> what, is, what is he talking about? So then he, he told me to get the nacho cheese. It was good. It was like, I'm, I do it every time I go to the movies now. Oh, nice. And, um, that was like the biggest one and then this is one second when he said he told a magic trick to a kid on a recruiting visit and the kid just was spooked after like the whole day on the visit like <laughs> that was real funny what was it like to be recruited by mike leach i know he's known sometimes for calling recruits and keeping him on the phone for a really long time so they can't talk to other coaches did you have any experiences like that and just overall what was it like being recruited by him um, I, I wasn't recruited by him, but like we had talks on the phone. So like he, he, he stays, he get off topic a lot. So like <laughs> when he's talking, he might go to something else, not even related to football. He might start talking about some, some like in Key West, like he doesn't stay on topic. And it's, it's like real, it's real enjoying knowing what he's saying because he's telling some good things though, like. It's some good things he putting out there. It's not like no bad things, but like he's just a funny. Like he was funny. And the, the last thing on Mike Leach, Woody, Lincoln Riley obviously is really connected with him. Have you spoken to Coach Riley much about his relationship with Mike Leach? Maybe during the recruiting process, and anything like that since you've been here? Um, no, I haven't. Um, big big change for you, Starkville, Mississippi, to uh, Los Angeles. It's kind of what gets your feel for what that transition has been like. And then how do you feel like being in LA could maybe, you know, have an impact on you and like the NIL world, which is now a huge part of college football? Um, the biggest difference from being in um, Starkville to LA is like, it's a big city. Uh, there's a lot of stores out here. Um, a lot of people. Starkville is really not a lot of people and not a lot of stores. They're um, on the upcome to um be in a lot of stores but it's way different like the food is different here the culture of people is different here um but the being here though is like a real big change to me as it's like just the food like it's a lot of street tacos you got a lot of good places to go eat you can go out to hollywood you can go out to beverly hill like it's a lot of stuff you can do here um the people is here is so nice on campus, the teachers, the classroom, more and more of school. Like when you go in the classroom, it's not like a big classroom is all you get your stuff. Like basically almost one-on-one, probably like 15 people in your class, 10 people in your class. Uh, it's the top school academics. The, uh, it's funny you mentioned that um, years ago I hired uh, so I recently I hired Connor to be our beat writer here, but I hired Dan Wykey to be the beat writer. He was covering Ole Miss for the rival site back in the day. And he's now the LA times beat writer. He covers the Lakers, but I hired Dan and he comes out from, he, you know, he's from like, um, Chicago has been in, uh, you know, it, it um, at Ole Miss for like a couple of years. And the, the, like the first thing he said was, wow, there's a Best Buy nearby. Like he mentioned like what you said, yeah. there's stores. Like it's funny, like there's a lot of stores. And I was like, this is not yeah. something you think about. Like, oh, that's like a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, <laughs> it, it's like Target. We didn't have a Target in Starkville. We had a Walmart. We, it just wasn't a lot of restaurants there that you can go eat and like, you had to go probably like two hours to go to the mall. It wasn't it wasn't a lot of stuff to do. So like out here, it's a lot of things to do. It's interesting because you guys have, if you've ever been to the University Village, like you have a Target right there, like basically on campus. Um, and our sponsor, Trader Joe's, there's a Trader Joe's there. I know they didn't have them in your area, but, but uh, Trader Joe's been a sponsor for a long time. But they're, yeah, they're right on campus there. You can go down and get food, whatever you want. Um, I was looking at their their website the dolce de leche uh, ice cream looks really 
really good. And they're putting on some kind of chocolate cake thing. So maybe you want to go check that one out. But uh, yeah, yeah, you have that kind of stuff right there. Like, you know, Target and Trader Joe's like right on campus where you, died, you don't have to drive two hours for something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Woody, what's different football-wise spring practice so far? Any differences between USC and Mississippi State from a spring practice per perspective? Um, I would say I would say it's not a big difference. Um, you gonna have ball players everywhere, but I would say like everybody everybody here is connected as one. Like this team is one. Um, they all they all in. Um, we have great practice. We fly around during the time they get they get their work in during the time and on the out on the off times like we in their meetings doing doing everything um to get better. So it's been going good. This spring is going good for us. Um, just trying to take a step every day. What's the you got here, and then it looks like the whole team. You weren't here last year, but there was a lot of gains made. It looks like with Benny Wiley and the strength and conditioning program. When did you got to come into that, and what? How has that changed you and your kind of off season workouts? And how different do you feel you look right now compared to like when you played last year? I would say I got um, a lot of more muscle. Um, I think Coach Wiley d does a great job just looking at all the guys that um, that has bodies has changed. Um, you can see the pictures that they put out um, changed tremendously. Like that's 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 crazy. Like a person body can change like that. Um, I think my body has changed um, a lot with like my legs. So I feel like my legs got bigger. My arms, my arms did get a little bigger. But um, I think Coach Wiley doing a great job just making everybody look apart. Based on one of the before and after photos I saw, Woody, you look like one of the most jacked guys on the team after uh, the last couple of weeks. I'm curious, what's the best part about that offseason strength training regimen? And then what's the worst part? Because I'm sure there are some days where it's really challenging too. Um, just I want I want to say like when it's challenging, we all just lean on we all lean on each other. Um, just like my first week here, like the sun, it was like, uh, it's hot, it's hot. Then it was like, why does it keep raining? Like, why does it keep raining? I'm in LA. Why does it keep raining? Like when I got here, people was like, it don't rain in LA. Like it been raining in LA a lot. Um, just times, just times every every time like we all lean on each other. I, that's what I like the most about this team. Um, we all lean on each other. We got each other's backs when times get hard. How about the new running back coach Anthony Jones? I believe you might have been a little familiar with him coming out of high school as a guy who maybe recruited you a little bit. But Kyle McDonald, who recruited you out of the portal, goes to the Chargers and then. USC brings in Anthony Jones, so a new position coach for you. What has it been like working with him so far? Oh, it's been great. Um, he's a great coach. He's come. He come with the same mentality every day. Want to get better, and not even just football. He come with it as like academics. Just getting better in academics. Um, if you got an A, let's try to get probably an A plus. Let's probably get one one letter. Up. Let's probably get one number up. So he he comes with it on and off the field. Um, great great coach. He 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 done coached some great players throughout his years. Um, he put some players in the NFL. He is like he's still in contact with those guys. Like we talked about it, he's still in contact with those guys. Like Tony Pollard, we we all talked to him, and he showed us some tape about the same things that he doing with us. He done did with them guys who came for us. So that's that's really the plus, and he know he knows exactly what he's doing. And I think he's going to put us in a great spot. What do you want to talk? Um, I mean, this is a big move. Uh, how involved was your family? I got a picture here of you and the family uh, on the field there at Mississippi State. Um, how involved were they in uh, your decision to uh, you know play your last year of eligibility out here in Los Angeles? Um, my mom, my mom, um, my mom and my brother really like um, Coach Riley's offense, and um, she just knows that. His team would be well rounded, and like him just being with Leach really made a, a um, good point because Leach teams always be good, always be great um, with like discipline and everything. And as a head coach, like my mom knows that he's going to take care of me while I'm up here. Um, I know it's a little bit far from home, but she she got that trust in Coach Riley and the coaches that he gave. 
and like the people that he has around um as on the staff that is going to be great a great move for me has your mom had a chance to come out to la since you visited or have you been doing a lot more phone calls and facetiming with her yeah she come out she came out i think she came out like three times already she's coming back for the spring game she'll be back for the spring and that'll be her fourth time so she's going to come out a lot like she's going to be here a lot how about the running back room woody because you seem to be like that plug and play guy gonna get a ton of touches and then the three running backs behind you a lot more experienced than quentin joiner or marion peterson and brian jackson what are the strengths of some of those younger guys i know you're you're new but uh just what have you seen from them and how excited ha have you been to work with those guys i just been very excited just to learn them guys and um just know what they know and me teaching them like stuff that i know um because I played the game a little bit more than them in college, um, just teaching them. And, like, those guys, those three guys are really, they're going to be really good. Um, they show me a lot in practice and what type of person they is on and off the field. So, them guys are going to be good. Um, Quinn Joyner, he's going to be real. He's, he's going to be really good. He's really fast, and he can get the job done on, on and off the field, just to put it like that. Um, Hey, Peter said he's going to be great. Um, he's a great guy. Just overall, he's a great guy. He um, knows what he's doing. And then you have Brian coming in. He's a freshman. He just get here. Like he has, he has picked up on a lot of stuff uh, very quick. Um, very intelligent man. Coming from Texas, uh, coming from um, like a great spot. So that's that's really the plus on all of them. And um, I think all everybody in our group is going to be very talented there we are very talented so everybody's going to play this fall you uh about halfway through spring football so you got what seven practices under your belt uh not sure if you watch it in the tv usc's defense hasn't been very good the last couple of years but it looks like you know danton lynn comes in uh the guys looks bigger and stronger what anyone kind of stand out to you you know you're, you're looking at this defense for the first time really anyone kind of stand out to you that's like wow that those guys look like that goes, those look, they look like dudes. Um, I would say the D line. The D line has stood out more to me. Um, throughout throughout the whole spring, the um, practice that we have, they have a high motor. They come, they got a little bigger, stronger. So they come in. I just asked a couple people like, "What's the difference on the defense than last year?" I wasn't physically there, but like I watched some of it. But like, what's the difference that you see this spring from like last year's spring? And they said the D line, and I kind of felt that from like watching, but not like physically being there. But the D line is coming with a high motor, um, and it's like feeding off to like everybody else who is behind them. And I think it started up front. So D line has has um, tremendous, did a great job this spring so far. I know USC fans, Woody, will love to hear that. Let me ask you the same question on offense: Who are some of your teammates on that side of the ball who maybe you knew about before, but like, okay, it's a Different things seeing them in practice every day. Who's impressed you on that side of the ball? Uh, first Miller. Um, just being around him, see how he operates. Um, and then like um, the whole line. Um, just have been outstanding to me as a running back. I'm appraised by old line first, but the right receivers. I think Jacoby and um Makai with um Zach coming from track. He come in, do his thing. And I think those three guys from the wideouts has shown like big, big, big improvement to me. And um, Kyron, his ball skills is tremendously good. And then, how about in terms of your transition and adjustment to USC? Have any guys on the team really helped you settle in? And who's just, I don't know if taking you under their wing is the right word, but who's helped you with the transition? Um, I'll say Kyron and Zach. Um, those guys has really um, brought me in really good. Uh, we talk about every day. Um, great guys. Like Z me and Zach, we sit next to each other in the locker room. So we talk every day. So he had, he's a great person to be around. And I really accept that because like I was new here and really didn't know my, my way around. And he really helped me um, just with everything. If I need to go find something to eat find something on, on campus, where to get to places, and, like, stuff like that. He he did a great job. 
Um, we posted on the Peristyle our message board over at uscfootball.com asking for any questions. Connor, do you want to do some of those, or do you have do you have some more you want to get to first, or what would you like? Sure, we can we can do a mix of both. So we can okay. start with our friend Casey Cosgrove. Ryan had a question. Oh. What do you miss about Mississippi State, Woody? Anything in particular? Um, I'll just say the people. The people is very nice out there. Um, like everywhere I go, even to Walmart, I got welcome. Like it's like it was like a home to me. It still is a home. Um, everybody, every everybody in the um, community was really uplifting to me. That southern right. hospitality. How come yeah. out of high school you decided on Mississippi State? You were a top 200 guy, could have really gone to a lot of places in the SEC. Why Mississippi State when you came out of high school? Oh, I chose Mississippi State because it was a great, it was a great place, a uh, small town, really, really great people there on my visits um, with Collin Hill, just being around Coach Moorhead. I just felt like that was the place's home, and I went to the game. And those cowbells, I, don't, I just, like, when I went to sleep, I was thinking about the cowbells. And, like, <laughs> it was, it's just a great place to be. And, like, the people, when I went on a visit, the people was just outstanding to me. So it just felt like home, like, where I could lay my head at every night. I always remember watching the Egg Bowl. And if it's at Mississippi State, you hear those cowbells. They go right through the, the TV. You can hear them really well. Our uh, another poster, Annenberg grad, wants to know, or I guess we already asked you that, so we'll skip that. Trojans fan seven wants to know, what does the USC running back legacy mean to you? You hit on it a little bit, but if you could just say more on what it means to play running back with the Trojans. Oh, it means a lot. Chess, chess, you gotta live, you gotta live by the standard every day. Um, in the classroom, on the field, just doing everything because like those guys who came before you. There's them some really good dudes and like we know what they're about on the football field. So we gotta live up to that standard. We might can't be their standard, but we gotta try to be their standard. So we gotta live that up every day. Not even just me, just everybody who comes in the room, everybody who come who coming in after me and everything. It's funny, um uh Anthony Jones was asked about that and you know, like mentioned Reggie Bush and Lendell White and even like guys like Marshall and Lloyd. I don't know if he mentioned like Marcus Allen. I think or you mentioned Marcus Allen. Maybe, maybe like Charles White or OJ Simpson stuff. Like, I mean, those are guys like a lot, you know, older, but just the, like as you growing up as a kid or like, I guess a little before your time is like the Reggie Bush time. But a lot of USC fans think of like the, the older school running backs and Reggie Bush sort of like, maybe it's a transition to the, like the newer style of college football. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'll say like Reggie Bush, that's like the biggest one to me. Uh, we was just watching OJ in the, uh, in the uh, media, media room. Oh, so, really? Okay. Yeah, I was watching his game, and hey, those guys are something serious. So, like, it was just, he was just put it out, like, you got to go out and ball like these guys, like they did. Like, they laid the foundation for you. So, you got to go out and ball and do it for them. Like, this what they set for you, and this is their path. They put USC, like, as a running back group, like on the map, like you have to be a dog to come here, like to play running back. You have that's so much. Like you have these great guys here that have did it. You got to come and do it. Like there's no, there's no way around it. You got to come and do it. While we're on the subject of great running backs, is there someone growing up who you watched, who you modeled your game after, or maybe someone in the NFL now? I know you're a great pass catching back too, so maybe that factors into it. Who'd you model your game after growing up? Uh, growing up, I liked Ezekiel Elliott, so um, that was like the biggest one. I've been watching him since college. Um, Zeke Elliott is my my favorite running back, and like, but now like I model my game after like Alvin Kamara. So, man. Yeah. Zeke Elliott had a nice season with my New England Patriots this year. One of the lone bright spots. Everyone else wasn't yeah. very good, but he might be going back to Dallas now. I don't know. Is, uh, yeah, I don't yeah. think he's signed, right? Uh, yeah, I don't think so. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm putting uh, got a couple clips of uh, Woody from practice on Tuesday catching balls. So very natural pass catcher. Everyone loves you know. It just seems like you look like a wide receiver out there, Woody. Yeah, I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get like trying to get like Zach. Zach, he's <laughs> Trying to get like that. <laughs> Woody does have the 
all-time receptions record in Mississippi State, right? Yes. Yeah, so USC fans, I'm sure, read our transfer portal article when you committed. They already knew that, but in case they forgot, this is a guy who's going to come in and, and catch a lot of balls. I'm really excited for, for that part because I think last season USC could have done that a little bit more, and now they have a guy who not only does that but set a record at his old school. A few more questions from some of our posters. Woody, thank you for the time. Juju on the beat wants to know, it's another strength and conditioning question because when we've talked to some players who transferred in, they'd said, oh, the strength and conditioning, it's kind of the same everywhere you go. Maybe the weight lifting stuff is a little bit different, but weights are weights. Can you compare the strength training at USC this offseason to your prior offseason conditioning? Is anything dramatically different? Is the nutrition different, or is it pretty similar? Um, I say um, Coach Wiley. Coach Wiley is different how he runs his um, his weight room and, like, when we do our runs. So, um, I say it's a little bit different um, the way we lift. Like, we lift it for a reason. He hit things. Like, if you got, like, had an injury, he's working on that, like, like he's going attacking that to get that injury, like so it wouldn't happen again. And I think um, Tiz Tiz a power lifter. Like we've been lifting very hard, and Tiz it's it's a reason about why that we're lifting very hard because like we got we got we going into a new conference, and like we got to get bigger. Like that's a must. We have to get bigger and stronger because like we're we're basically like the freshmen coming into that conference. And like we don't want to be treated like that. And I say on the nutrition side, oh, it's very nice. Um, tis the way how Miss Rachel, how she how she laid a platform down with us is like just making sure our bodies is good and making sure that we're maintaining great um hydration um every day. And then with the meals we have is phenomenal. Um, I don't think I don't think in college I had like. The best food, like, after practice, before practice, and breakfast, like, this is the best food I ever had, and, like, I think my body feels great. Love to hear it. So California wants to know, on a scale of 1 to 10, what's your blocking ability and why? Uh, I'll probably say an 8. Um, I think I got to get better at, like, a little technique stuff, just everything. Um, always improvement on blocking. Like, that's my main thing. Um, blocking comes first. Um, blocking is what gets you paid because you're blocking for the man who make the most money on the football team. And that's what's going to get you, like, stand on the field. If you can't block, I don't think you will be on the field because the quarterback is the most precious thing on the field. So you got to protect the quarterback. If you don't, then what? In the NFL, at the next level, you must protect the quarterback or you can't play. You can be the greatest player ever, but if you can't block, man, we don't know, like, they don't know how to use you. So I put a lot of uh, emphasis on pass blocking. And so Travis Dye said, no blocking, no Rocky a couple of years ago. Is that like, I think that's what he said. So I don't know if yeah. that's still, it's still around the running back room. Yeah. <laughs> BN2240. Woody, what are the keys to being a good pass catching running back? And how did you develop those skills? Um, just our coordination. You gotta have, you gotta uh, um see the ball. You gotta look it in. Um, just everything. I think tennis balls have got me um way better a lot. Just, just with tennis balls, it's a little ball. So you gotta have, you gotta see the ball in. You gotta have good eyes with it. Um, I get on the judge machine probably about every day. Just looking balls in. Just getting the ball in. Cause like once the little ball, you'll see the big ball. That little ball, you got to have good eye coordination with it. So just tracking everything and then going out and just catching a lot of balls. You got to catch probably like 100 balls a day. Last one from our message board posters. Thomas Trojan, 81, wants to know, you mentioned how the defensive linemen have looked really good. Is there a specific defensive lineman who's been the biggest problem for you in practice so far? Or have you more just been observing the whole group? Um, I'll probably say the interior guys. So... Um, Chess on run on like their run fits is pretty good. Um, they get off the ball very fast. They're very strong. They use their hands and like just doing a lot of things. So like I'll say the interior guys has made like the biggest biggest impact on me than like the outside guys. The outside guys they do a lot, but like those inside guys, I know what it takes like to stop the run. You gotta have the inside guys, and I think they have been clogging up lanes and doing a great job. But like. Our O-line is good, too, so 
they're going at it every day in practice, and I see I'm, I'm gonna see the defensive guys because I like talk to them and see like things that what did the O line give off? Like what did I give off that you knew that it was coming? Like just tell me a lot of stuff about like why did this play not work? So like I can tell them and I can tell myself like what to do and what not to do. So I think the interior guys has did a great job just using their hands and using their power and strength. Another thing USC fans will love to hear. Woody, two final questions for me. We can get you out of here first. What other programs were on you when you were in the transfer portal? And you talked about it a little bit, Lincoln Riley and your mom being comfortable with the offense and you being here, but why'd you ultimately choose USC? What, was it mostly that? Was it the role here? Was it the school? Fill me in on the teams that were in on you and then why you chose USC. Um, so all the schools that was on me a lot um, was Ohio State and Florida State. Um, that was like the main two in Louisville. Um, I chose USC because it's a great school. Um, being out in LA, it's a great way to um, like networking. So that's a big that's a big plus for me because football is going to end one day. You need connections and like I want to do physical therapy. It's a great physical therapy out here, and I can connect with him. So like just set yourself up later for life. This was the biggest one for me. Football is a great program, great coaches, great people around. You have like. Brittany Thackeray, and she came from Mississippi State. You have Dave Emery, came from Mississippi State. And, like, I know what those – I know what they're about, and I know what type of culture they're, they want to join. So so that's why a little bit was, like, come there. And then – but, like, the school-wise, I knew, like, going into grad school there is going to be a great place for me. Like, not even football. I wasn't really thinking about football. I was just thinking about life. Just was, like, get my um, master's there and just going on and being like my life just think about it later in my life for, for excellent and um that was like the biggest spotlight for me and then on the football side coach riley coach riley um he just a great man just just knowing like the background of background of him in oklahoma and many places just like following it and looking down and like deeply looking at like some stuff that they run, like I could, I, I came in and I know I like some of the stuff because like some of it from like Coach, Coach, um, Coach Leach. So like I know I was going to acclimate to the playbook really fast, and I think I have just knowing like some stuff is the same and some stuff might be a little bit of tweaks to it. So that was a plus on that side too, and then just just coming out here when I came out here. I just, I loved it. Um, it was a great place. It's a great place to be and like the people and like just the opportunities that you can have coming out to LA. You're selling it really well. Thank you for that <laughs> long winded answer. That, that was amazing. Last thing this off season, what have you tried to improve on the most? What, what do you want to get better at ahead of the season? What, what's the one characteristic or the, or the one area of your game you're trying to improve the most? Uh, just attacking the third level. Like, I think Coach Jones has, like, when he came in, he put a lot of emphasis on that, just with everybody in the room. Like, if you break away, you got to break away the third level. That's how you're going to get your money and get paid. Like, the third level, you must do that. And he 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 coach on it every day. And, like, just me, my biggest off-season one was just get it, get it faster. Like, it's always ways to get faster, so... I think Coach Wiley done, done a great job with that, um, getting me fast to get everybody faster on the field. Where are you in the the running back room, like hierarchy of speed? Like where, where, who's, where do you think you rank there? Uh, probably two, probably two. Quinn, he's pretty fast. He's pretty fast? Okay. All right, so not yeah. bad. It's always fun to talk about when you guys talk about who's fastest or not. It's always, it's always uh, interesting to hear, but yeah. <laughs> We really appreciate the time. Uh, we did more than a half hour with you. So thank you so much, uh, Woody, to come on. It was a pleasure to talk to you after practice last week. And then, again, this more long-form thing. Uh, thank you so much for, for taking some time. I know you guys are super busy with school and football and everything. And you got practice tomorrow. But uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. You did a great job. Thanks so much. No problem. <laughs> Woody, uh, you can follow him on Twitter. Uh, I got the Twitter up there. Uh, J O Q U A V I O U S Marks M A R K S. 
Uh, you're on Twitter sometimes, right? Sometimes guys aren't on Twitter as much. Are you a Twitter guy or Instagram or which one do you do? Or I'll be on Instagram a lot. I really, I'll be on Twitter a little bit, but not that much. All right. Uh, well, Woody Marks, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, everyone else, we're going to take a quick break and we'll come right back. But thanks again, Woody. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. And everyone else, back in a minute. Okay, thank you. All righty. Oops, we're going to change that up. We are back here. I still had the old... Uh, didn't change the if you're watching on youtube i didn't change the uh camera angle so we don't have the woody shot anymore it's just me you're stuck with me and connor for the rest of the show but another fun one um you know we, we weren't sure how long he he gave some really long answers and a lot of thought goes into stuff it was great to kind of hear from him and um it, it's so funny when he's like yeah there's stores like that's like i <laughs> don't even realize that like i've mostly lived in like cities so you don't really know oh there's not like a lot of stores around but, you know, Dan Wecky said the same thing when he came from uh, from Miss, uh, Ole Miss. So that was kind of interesting. Like, hey, there's stores close by. That is hilarious. That was a great <laughs> interview, though. It was awesome to get to know Woody a little bit more. And he's talking about the defensive line. Danton Lynn, when we talked to him, was talking about the defensive line. I better see some defensive linemen making some plays in the spring game, Ryan, because we can't really see we're hearing a, lot. A, a ton of action in the practices that we're able to watch. But it, it sounds like the defensive line, some changes for the better have been made, especially on the interior. And if you're a USC fan, that's got to be music to your ears. Really, really exciting stuff. Yeah. Uh, three years in a row, it looks like USC brought in a, you know, a one year stopgap. I don't know if it's three years in a row, if it's a stopgap, but uh, you know, a, a veteran, Running back, you know, Travis Dye from Oregon, and then Marshawn Lloyd, South Carolina, and then sticking in the SEC country. Now you got Woody Marks coming in from Mississippi State. His his pass catching ability is something that like I'm, you know, I'm curious how much that gets used if he's like, whoa, everyone's like, wow, man, he's catching balls all over the place. Um, I think he could be a huge, you know, a security blanket for Miller Moss, who maybe would take the sort of dump off option more than Caleb Williams, who's, you know, was amazing at just making great plays. But I don't know, maybe Miller Moss kind of looks at that like, hey, I can dump this off and, and Woody's going to, you know, make, break a big play. So I think he can be a huge part of this. Offense. I know when we were doing like the, what was it, the top list of the important people and stuff, I, I think he's someone that everyone had pretty high up there, right? Oh, absolutely. And I'm just looking at some of the stats from last season. So Marshawn Lloyd, not as much of a receiver, 13 catches, but for 232 yards when, when he caught a ball. He, he had some big ones. He, had, he, he broke some <laughs> plays, but he just didn't have a lot of those catches. And then Austin Jones also had 13 catches. I think that Woody Marks will get to both of them combined and, and have more. I look for him to have like 30 or 40 catches on the year and have a really big impact. I hope he stays healthy for the whole season because I think he's such a versatile weapon who could really, really help USC. The depth behind him, a little bit of a question. But uh, it also sounds like Quinton Joyner has sort of established himself as that second guy, which isn't really a big surprise because last year he was that first freshman off the bench ahead of Amarian Peterson. I think he'll have a big role unless USC adds someone else from the portal. We'll see. But if if they don't, I think Quinton Joyner could play a whole lot. And that's what Hank in the chat said, uh, who was number two behind. So speed-wise, he was saying he was behind Quinton Joyner, that he was faster, right? That Quinton mm -hmm. Joyner was faster than him. But he's a fast dude. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that was interesting. So it's a, it's kind of like him and then a bunch of young guys in the running back room. Um, so that'll be kind of interesting to kind of see how that goes. We didn't really get to do our, like, sort of intro at the start of the show. So I just want to let everyone know. If you have questions for the show, you can email us. We haven't got a lot of emails lately, so if you want to email us, we'll get right to it. Podcast at uscfootball.com. Or you can call or text us at 424-254-9141. Send us a text. Leave us a voicemail. And if you have the Apple Podcasting app, we do appreciate a five-star review. You can also do that on Spotify. I'll leave us a five-star rating. And then on uh, Apple Podcasts, you can leave a review. Those are awesome. So if you can do one of those, uh, please do. And it helps to... Uh, grow the show and everything and we already thanked our sponsor trader joe's at the top i slipped that in there yeah we asked uh woody beforehand so i don't think there was trader joe's near where he was in starkville so um <laughs> yeah so he's got he's got to get introduced to it now you know that's on the campus you know, like target and trader joe's right over there at the university uh village so appreciate him but that was it was a lot of fun kind of talking to him hearing uh 
you know, the Mike Leach stories and stuff. And just, you know, I, I, I'm good friends with Bruce Feldman, who wrote that book uh, with with Mike Leach. So hearing some of those stories from behind the scenes was pretty cool. And everyone you talk to about Leach has some good stories. So, you know, were you expecting him to say something about putting nacho cheese on a hot dog? No, but there, that's that's a, a great Mike Leach story. And then making it disappear because he ate it so fast. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> Mike Leach, he's a guy where whenever there's a profile about him, even – since he's passed away, that's something I've always made time for. And I've never been disappointed. The stuff about uh, it's the Florida Keys, right? Where where he would go? That, yeah. that sitting in that bar. Those stories are amazing. So I got to read that book. I think. Oh yeah, you can borrow it if you want. Um, yeah, it's great. And uh, when we would do Pac-12 Media Day, you know, those can be pretty boring, right? There's but there's usually like a personality or two. They're like, oh, I want to talk to him. And when Mike Leach was there, you could like sit down at like he would sit down and talk to any of the reporters and i remember dan weber would just get one-on-one -on -one time with him for a while and just like he would you know i'm waxing poetically about things that aren't football you know um <laughs> geronimo or whatever it was he would love talking about all that kind of stuff so that was cool but great to hear from woody thanks again to house of victory for uh setting all of that up um it was great he was uh you know phenomenal and it was fun to hear from him i think usc fans will uh, embrace him kind of like they did Travis Dye and Marshawn Lloyd. Um, Mark in the chat says uh, he's going to be better than Lloyd. We'll see. Oh, I put the wrong comment up. But um, potentially he could be, you know, as good as anyone they've had since uh, Riley got here. So that's why he's such an important you – know, it could be an important cog in this offense. I think asking him to be better than Lloyd is tough. Is it possible? Sure. But Marshawn Lloyd outside of the fumbles was – Really, really good last yeah. year. Over seven yards per carry. I don't know if you can expect Woody Marks to be over seven yards per carry. And remember, the offensive line wasn't as good as we thought either. So that was just Marshawn Lloyd's pure athleticism a lot of the time, just bowling people over. I, I do think Marks is going to be really good. His pass catching will separate him. He'll certainly be better as a pass catcher, maybe not yards per catch, because, again, Marshawn Lloyd had like 17 <laughs> yards per catch, something crazy. But I think he can be a little bit more consistent – in that passing game. And I'm really excited to see what he can do. In my opinion, I think this year he uses it to show NFL teams. I'm a fourth round, fifth round pick, third down back. A guy who, if it's third and three, you can hand it off to me, try to catch the defense off guard, or I'll go out and catch a pass and get you the four yards you need to get the first down. I think that's sort of his role at the next level. And I'm really excited to see what he can do. For sure. Um, if you are watching us live on YouTube again on our YouTube channel, thank you so much. You can put a question in the chat and we'll get to it. We have a couple other topics uh, we want to uh, get to, but I just I want to let you guys know if you are not subscribed to uscfootball.com, what are you thinking? But you can get over there 50% uh, off right now. And the reason why is because there is a coaching search going on. No, this isn't football. Lincoln Riley's still there. He didn't go to the Chargers or anything like that. But, as we had mentioned um, before, USC now needs a head basketball coach. Andy Enfield is off to SMU. And the coaching search is going on. Connor put together a great hot board. Uh, but that's kind of what's going on right now. We're all, like, texting each other what we're hearing, what's going on behind the scenes. No decisions have been made yet. There's some names that have been out there. But I just want to kind of get your thoughts, Connor, on USC uh, looking for a men's basketball coach. The Eric Musselman interest is definitely real. But I think to everyone saying, oh, he's for sure the guy, let's pump the brakes a little bit based on what I've heard recently. He's very much in play and it could very much happen. But I don't know if he's even the leader necessarily right now. I think he interviewed or I know he interviewed today, but USC is doing its due diligence and they're going through the process. A lot of has been made of him maybe wanting out of Arkansas, and a lot of the leaks that have come out from this search, I think, have been more on his side than USC side because Jen Cohen is a wily veteran. She's not going to go out of her way to, to leak a lot of stuff, I, I don't believe. So I think Jamie Dixon is in the mix. I think Buzz Williams is in the mix too, and it's going to be one of those three based on uh, – what I've heard as of April 3rd, 7.22 p.m. Nice. It's all subject to change, but that's the latest I got. Yeah. Uh, it, it looks like there's some interest, though, which is good. Um, I mean, USC's had, you know, kind of talent level here 
and production here, and they would like to get, you know, keep that talent up there and uh, bring the production up a little bit. Um, so we'll see. You know, getting it sounds like though this isn't going to take months. No, it's, it's ho hopefully days. not. The, the portal's open, so they they got some work to do. And right now the roster. I think Harrison Hornery is the only confirmed scholarship guy who will 100% be back. That's one guy. So they, whoever comes in is in for a complete transformation. Who knows about Bronny James? It's looking like he's probably going to leave. Nothing set in stone with that. But I wouldn't be surprised if he declares for the draft at this point based on some things I've heard. It seemed like he was either weighing coming back to USC or the draft. And then yesterday we had the April Fool's stuff with him entering the portal. That was unsubstantiated. Some reporter fell for an April Fool's thing, and then wow. that got blown out of proportion. So is it possible he enters, or he, yeah, he enters the transfer portal? Yes, but take nothing away from yesterday. That was all phony. Yeah, they're, I mean, he's, they're, they're making measured decisions. I think they're going to wait to see who the coach uh -huh. is. But I think the biggest decision is, does he want to go try to play with his dad? You know, scoring five points a game in college off the bench isn't, you know, is that NBA material, like for a, Sub 500 team, probably not, but you're Bronny James. You saw the athleticism, like, you know, someone could take him under his wing there. We'll see kind of what happens there. But yeah, so it's, it's, it's kind of weird right now with uh, men's basketball. Women's basketball obviously made a nice run to the Elite Eight, fell short. Uh, Paige Beckers and, uh, and everyone at UConn there. So UConn's now in the Final Four, but pretty impressive for, you know, big run with Juju. And uh, they can certainly build on this with Lindsey Gottlieb and stuff. So that was fun to kind of watch. But I, I guess they played the last ever Pac-12 basketball game, you know, right? Like with a Pac-12 team. Because there was no Pac-12 teams left. The men were out. You know, there's no men team in the men's tournament. So the last Pac-12 basketball team to play would be the women of Troy losing to UConn. I think Utah played in the NIT, but that was, I believe, before – the USC. Oh, women. I didn't realize that. Okay. I, I didn't either. I, and then I saw a tweet, but they lost. I, I believe it was before. So I, I think they not only won the last Pac-12 tournament, but they were the last team from the Pac-12 to be playing a game. I believe that's right. That's sad. It is, it is sad. Um, thinking about that, that there's just no more, there's just no more Pac-12. Uh, there will still be, like, if you look up standings, I think you'll see a Pac-12 going forward, but it's Washington State, Oregon State. I think they're still under that banner of the Pac-12, um, you know, for the next two years, or at least, you know, at least next year where they have like a deal with the, the CW for TV games. And it's kind of weird, like just how that's going to all play out, but uh, we'll see. Feel bad for Washington state and Oregon state. I, I do. The one thing that is annoying though, we see the Washington state AD take the Washington AD job after the Washington AD went to, Nebraska, Patron, yeah. yeah, and then the president of Washington State, Kirk Schultz, is like all up in arms, and that summarizes all the problems that the Pac-12 had. Like, if you can't see that the Washington AD job is better than the Washington State AD job, even though this guy had all these ties to Washington State and had been there for so long, then I can't help you. You're What's going on with the Oregon State women's basketball team right now? They're second-best players in the portal. They're having trouble retaining the roster. It's not an attractive place for the best people in college athletics, whether it's an AD, whether it's a player, whether it's a coach. And I can't believe that the Washington State president came out and got all mad at the AD for leaving. That's the problem. It's not as good as these other yeah. schools. And for him still not to recognize that, even with the league only having two teams, it's like that was your problem the whole time, buddy. It's like you were in like a club. Like you might not be like the best golfer, but you were in like – you were a member of Augusta and now you're not. And you're like, Oh, Hey, I, I was an Augusta member. Like, well, you're not anymore. And you weren't the, like, if you were the best player in Augusta and you went somewhere else to their club, you could be the club champion there, but you're not going to be, I don't know if that analogy sucks, probably does, but that's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you're not, you were a member of the club and now you're not. And the whole reason you were getting the attention you got was because you were in that club. Mm -hmm. Now you did some good things. Sometimes you made little runs. Maybe you, uh, you know, won the member guest once or twice, but if you weren't a member of that club, then no one's it, following you by your, you're not Tiger Woods. Yes. You're not following it. Yeah. It's one of those things. If you do your own thing, I'm sorry, but you're not, you don't have as much value. It's tough. So we could cross promote a little bit uh, tomorrow on Thursday in the afternoon. Um, so it depends on if you're listening to this, if you're watching live, I will be doing a podcast of champions episode uh, live on our YouTube channel over there. Podcast of champions with uh, Angie Machado, who's been covering Oregon state for multiple decades 
So we'll kind of get a feel for what's going on with the uh, the beeves, if you still care. I know USC's not playing them anymore, but uh, I'm curious to kind of see what's happening. They have players leaving the portal uh, on all sports, it seems like. So that's kind of a problem. Um, you know, uh, was it Kyle Smith? Was it, is that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that left from Washington State to go coach, to be the basketball coach at Stanford. One of the Oregon State assistants followed him there. So they lost an assistant coach for the men's basketball team. Now he was like a Stanford guy, literally born in Stanford, um, Palo Alto or whatever. But there's, they're just, it's going to be a tough off season uh, with people leaving. And I think they're doing a really nice job of what they can do. They got like $65 million coming from the departing Pac-12 schools, the 10 schools. And they have assurances that no one leaving the Pac-12 the Pac can blow it up and say, hey, we want to get all those units that are coming to you over the next six years. Like they, they get to keep like the – it's almost like Cleveland when like the, the Browns left for Baltimore. I mean, for yeah, for, for Baltimore, right? It became the Ravens. Cleveland got to keep the Browns' name. It's like they're keeping the name. And there's some, you know, there's some history there. They get they got something that comes with it. And now they have an opportunity to try to build it back up. I think it's going to be very difficult to do. But uh, it's a, you know, it, it can't be a good feeling. It's just basically you're just left behind. Um, you know, it's one of those apocalyptic movies where we have like a, you know, a, a sh- spaceship that's going to take everyone off Earth that's going to blow up and like, all your friends are on and you're, you and your buddy are the last two people that are left behind on earth. And, uh, you're, you're just going to get blown up. You couldn't get in any analogies with Woody Mark. So you're, you're cramming all, <laughs> all in at the end here. I love it. I should have got some in with Woody, but I didn't get to relate the, uh, the Oxford, Mississippi, Starkville, Mississippi, moving to LA kind of thing. Like, yes. Oh, did Dan specifically brought up Best Buy? Cause at the time you would buy like CDs, like people don't do that anymore. But he was like, he couldn't find places to go buy CDs because Best Buy was like two hours away or something. But uh, anyway, yeah. So, yeah, we'll see kind of what happens there. Uh, spring practice is rolling on. Um, we'll be out there tomorrow afternoon. We've uh, put up a bunch of videos and stuff on our YouTube channel, of the interviews and things we've done. A lot of stories going up uh, on the site. Anything kind of interesting coming out of spring ball? We did get to... Here, uh, you know, Anthony Jones, uh, he was fun to talk to um, on Tuesday. But anything else kind of off the top of your head for a spring ball? It just comes back to I think the defensive staff is doing a nice job, and I do think the defense will be better. What I've said all along is sort of what I continue to think. It's all about the offensive line next season for USC. Even if it's not as good, they'll score points. It's Lincoln Riley. The offense should be fine relative to other programs. But if USC wants to get close to that elite level and really be able to challenge in the Big Ten, I think the offensive line is the most important part of the team because that's where I have the biggest questions right now. Jonah moving to center, assuming that all goes well, that's a lockdown spot. Emmanuel Pregnant at left guard I feel like is a lockdown spot, but left tackle, new face. Right guard, potential new face. Right tackle, likely a new face. And we'll see what they do in the transfer portal. But if that unit isn't better than it was last season, I don't know how much better USC can be. And so when I go to spring practice, I try to look at the offensive linemen. They're way in the corner on Rehab Island. It's it's tough to see. I want to talk to Josh Henson more. I don't even know if we'll get that opportunity because he's already spoken once. I try to pick up things with the offensive line. And some days that's easier than other days. To me, that's really what the season will come down to. And, of course, it's football. There's a million things, other factors. But I, I, I think the offensive line is so, so key. We had a comment from Roger. USC spring game is on Pac-12 Network. How awful. Okay, so, <laughs> well, that's where it is. Last year, they only had Colorado on ESPN just because of the Dion factor. But uh, the Pac-12 Network still exists. And the conference really isn't, I mean, it's really not dead at all. But stopping to exist the way we all know it will be, I think it's July 1st or April, it's like the middle of the year. So it's going to, or maybe April, August 1st, whatever. It's in the summer. It transitions over. Um, they're still showing like stuff on the Pac-12 network. You can still get it. I think all the big shows that they were going to do were around football and basketball. I think those are done. Uh, I think like you know Ashley Adamson and you know Yogi Roth. I don't think they'll be doing anything else. Like maybe some spring game stuff, and I think that would be about it. But they still have live broadcasts. They still have contractually. They have to do a bunch of those broadcasts for all the things. But their contract ends, and I think. 
how the network will exist. Maybe Oregon State, Washington State has some sort of streaming thing where they produce their own stuff, but they there is p good infrastructure for the Pac-12 network. And I think when they've signed over like their home games, football home games for the CW, I think they can use the production capabilities of the Pac-12 network to do that because I don't think the CW is going to be doing it. I think you're they're providing the um, you know outlet, and I think they have to get a produced product. So I think Oregon State, Washington State will have a little more control over their the production of their home games, and they'll be able to use the infrastructure of the Pac-12 network. But it still exists. The spring games are going to be on there, and I think that's probably the last thing that you'll care about. Um, I think that it, that's actually been pretty good for women's college basketball and stuff, I think, over the years when there was just no other place to watch them. It kind of hurt women's college basketball when it became very popular and the Pac-12 was very good and nobody was seeing, you know, Stanford or Oregon State or Juju Watkins at USC or, you know, Colorado was good and Utah was good. People weren't really seeing it, but when people didn't care as much, it was good. Then when people cared, it they just kind of fell short on a national level because, you know, you're the first time you're seeing is Juju Watkins is in the NCAA tournament, and that's that's a shame. That was too bad. I know Shotgun complained about that a lot this season, which makes total sense because even though they don't have any teams in the Final Four, the Pac-12 for women's basketball was the deepest league to get, I believe, five teams into the Sweet 16, Stanford, USC, UCLA, Oregon State, maybe only four. I might be forgetting someone, but they had a lot of teams in the Sweet 16. It was just a really deep league this year, and not a lot of people had a chance to watch it, like you said, Ryan. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anything else, Connor? Shout out to Woody Marks. I thought he sounded awesome, and it was really fun to speak with him and get to know him more. Yeah. He's pretty jacked. <laughs> we can't really tell. Oh, There's a good picture of him. The, if you the, watch YouTube. the, the Tuesday transformation tweet, I think from – one of the assistant strength coaches that came out Tuesday, like he looked the most jacked out of any of the guys who, who I've seen any of the transformations. So I should have grabbed that. I didn't see that one. I should have grabbed it, the picture and put it up on the screen, but people go check it out. I believe I retweeted it. So if you dig, I know I tweet a lot, but if you dig deep, you can, you can find it. He just looks like a bodybuilder. It's crazy. He, he does. Um, all right. Well, we're going to get out of here because. We, uh, we've inconvenienced, and if you're listening on the podcast, uh, we've inconvenienced a fan favorite, the uh, Composite Two-Star Recruits podcast. They normally start recording at 7, right now, locally at 7.35 p.m. Because we were getting Woody on at 6.30. So we kind of like bumped Chris out a little bit. <laughs> and I uh, think he was not happy about it. But well, that's okay. This four-hour show will now go to like 2 in the morning instead of 1. So... Um, but yeah, we apologize for that, but we have that coming up on the feed. If you're listening on the podcast, you'll get, um, composite two-star recruit coming up, uh, pretty soon. And like I said, if you want to, we're going to talk a lot about the pack two, if you're interested at all, uh, on the uh, podcast of champions, we're going to talk with Angie Machado about everything that's going on over at Oregon state. And then we're going to try to get, uh, the Washington state perspective, uh, the following week, but that's going to do it. Uh, Woody Marks was great. Appreciate that. Thanks again to house of victory. Thanks to. Um, Trader Joe's, our friends over there, they've been awesome. And uh, thanks to you, Connor, for uh, hanging out. He just, Connor's the most easygoing guy. He'd be like, <laughs> hey, Connor, we're going to do the show at one or we're going to do the show at 6 30. He's like, just whatever, it's fine. He'll just say, he's like, it's good. Like, if I could just say, hey, we're going to do the show at 2 a.m., he's like, that's fine. I'll, I'll be there. Um, <laughs> really easygoing. It's good. Happy to help. Whatever you need. That's good. It's, it's first year, you know. Yeah, so I think yeah after next that, year you're like, screwed, man. You're like, F you. I'm not coming there <laughs> too far. I'm not, going to, what that, I'm not coming at that time. No way. Uh, but it's been great. So a lot of fun. My, I told Connor this morning, my workout, I do that 45 workout. The workout, they give different names to it. It was called Triple Double. I was Woo! like, oh. I showed my trainer. I'm like, I spelled your name for her. And she's like, what? I'm like, three, you know, Triple Double. We call them Triple Double. It's like, oh, okay. I'm like, that's kind of funny. She's like, who she cares? She did not care. She did not care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to wrap that up here. I've just talked way too much. Uh, for Connor Morissette, uh, I am Ryan Abraham. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we will talk to you next time.